Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include Migrants qualify for UK state subsidised mortgages Recession helps Ireland meet strict EU waste targets Rubbish Germany's competitiveness at stake due to labour costs BRICS emerging economies cannot become the world's next European Union Finally Users of Linux, a free software system, take on Microsoft in an epic EU battle. I'm Rick Timmis, and this is the Unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage. Analysts of plans set out by Chancellor George Osborne to make it cheaper for people to take out loans shows that people from inside and outside the European Union can qualify. More legal supremacy by the EU, once again demonstrating the loss of sovereignty which has secretly taken place in Britain. Here's the nub of legal precedent. If someone wants to come to work here and they could not access the same finance as an English person, it would be a case for discrimination because it would prevent them from moving here. It is such a terrible shame that all of this was warned in the Foreign and Commonwealth Office document 301048 way back in the early 1970s. This has indeed come to pass. What should have been a shining example of how to grow and develop a European-wide democratic community has in fact been mismanaged into a bureaucratic totalitarian mutation of the old Soviet mechanism. The moment you step away from the principle of governance of the people, by the people, all bets are off. You can say what you like about the British, but we do have a fine and extensive history of how to run a democracy. Recession and a marked fall in personal consumption has helped Ireland meet all but one of its EU waste recovery targets. The article reports that figures released show a 17% decrease in household waste. It then goes on to spin this up into a positive. But is it? Well, I don't believe so. As I predicted earlier in this week, the press campaign to paper over the cracks by EU spin doctors is really only a temporary band-aid. The reality is that Ireland's bond debt is doubly subscribed. AIB, for example, carries debt agreements which are positions held by multiple investments who have a claim to the same monies. A recipe for implosion. No country can hope to borrow its way out of this situation. Austerity and tax hikes are only making things worse. The bailouts are simply kicking the can down the road. Look, ministers of the dark towers of the EU, go back to basic O-level geography. No country can operate without primary and secondary industry. Germany, the richest nation in the Eurozone, has been propping up too much of the EU for too long, and she and her people are feeling the pain. But there is another cloud on the horizon, labour costs. As countries in the Eurozone collapse, their people become more impoverished and are forced to work harder for less. This is causing an upward drift for German labour costs, taking them above average and making them less competitive. Here is a big conundrum, however. A breakup of the Eurozone or an exit of Cyprus and Greece would make the German situation worse, as those countries would immediately devalue their currencies, further extending the competitiveness disparity. Such a move would affect France too. BRICS, that is Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa. This article looks at the rapid growth and development of these nations and investigates how their relationship compares with that of the EU. Of course, a thorn in the side for the floundering EU, as the primary and secondary industries of which I spoke earlier in the show are the very instrument that has built the new BRICS economies, and even as they emerge into more developed economies, they still remain significantly more competitive than that of other EU nations. Ah, free and open source software, my favourite topic. I'm very passionate about the possibilities that the global free software movement has demonstrated. I could talk on this topic for hours, but before I get to the core of the article, I just want to mention something. 
Debian, one of the founding Linux operating systems, shows the beauty and power of an open, democratic meritocracy. The very fact that you have a global internet with trillions of websites, a planet-wide hive collation of information within which resides the complete works of human innovation, can in a huge number of ways be attributed to the Debian GNU Linux software operating system. Developed, distributed and managed by a global workforce that transcends national boundaries, economies and fiat currencies. I declare this to be the shining example of the social and political world to come. OK, sermon over. Let's take a look at this article. Spanish users of the Linux operating system are taking Microsoft on in an epic battle over more anti-competitive behaviour. Microsoft uses its market dominance to press computer manufacturers in Europe to only sell computers with its operating system installed. The Washington-based behemoth has gone one further, however, by introducing a locking mechanism that hardware vendors must implement that makes it much more difficult for the consumer to install any other operating system onto their newly bought machine. This highlights a positive of the EU in that a single nation or group trying to take on such a global corporation to task wouldn't really be feasible, but via the EU there is enough clout. There is an unmentioned downside, however, and that is the EU will most likely impose a fine on Microsoft, which will be less than its market profitability for the Eurozone. And so Microsoft is left with a simple equation. Pay a higher tax and retain market dominance, or open up the vendor space and lose market share to a better developed, faster and more secure operating system that has a much lower price tag and a more cost-efficient development model. Not really a choice. Is it? I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon. You can get lots more news stories and information on our website, theunit.com. You can get in touch with us there, and we particularly welcome your letters and points of view. You can follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter username is the EUnit. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of our regular updates. You can join me and the rest of the team for interactive discussion and debate on Google Plus at any time. Are you looking for a public speaker for your event? Our public speakers are happy to come and discuss Britain's relationship with the EU in your area at no cost. If you would like to add interest and value to your group event, then get in touch with us via the Word section of our website. Join us in our live question time style online show, The Unit Interactive, broadcast live on our website, theunit.com, and globally via thehangoutshow.com. Join our community on Google+, and you can be part of the wider public voice, united in freedom, liberty, and independence. Simply join our community, The Unit, on Google+. Links to the community page are below. <laughs>